Is it possible to shoot with just one lens? Uh, is it even a good idea? Is there any advantage to using just one lens? Also, which is the best lens that I should get if I can only afford to buy one? Uh, these are just some of the many questions I get online and today I'm gonna answer them all. First, let's talk about indie filmmaking. Uh, this term usually means that the filmmakers have to be efficient and resourceful. Uh, this type of filmmaking also develops skills that can be critical when working with multi-million dollar budgets. A great example of this is the Academy Award winning film Dallas Buyers Club, directed by Jean-Marc Vallée. Uh, now even though this film starts Matthew McConaughey, the production was limited to only 5 million. <laughs> and I know some of you are probably thinking, wow, that's a lot of money. But again, considering the complexity of the production, the story is set in the 1980s. It has many different locations, including multiple countries and 60 sets. So definitely making this movie was a challenge. Now, fortunately, the director and his team, including the director of photography and the production designer, were up to the task. They shot the whole movie without artificial lights, uh, tripods, dollies, or even any other camera stabilizer. They, they used only one camera, which was the Arri Alexa, and they used one lens. Well, actually they used two lenses, but majority of the film was still shot with just one lens, which was the 15 millimeter focal length. And the other lens was slightly wider, uh, which they used mainly in tight interior locations, and that was 35 millimeters. Uh, this allowed the production team to keep the shoot to only 25 days, which in turn saved a lot of dollars and allowed them to hire a lot of great and known actors. Now during the filming, the only lights uh, that were used were the actual existing lights on location or practical lights added to the sets and locations by the production design team. Uh, other than that, the only other light source was the sun. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is that in short, the less gear you have to set up, the less time you're gonna spend uh, setting up and the more time shooting. I myself really noticed that when working on various projects as the cinematographer, because often I'm asked, you know, between the shots by the AD, how much time we need to swap the lens. And even if I say, let's say it's gonna be 30 seconds, uh, it often means that the whole production just stops. The crew usually just jumps on their phones, the cast kind of starts chatting or walks away off the set to grab some snacks or something. And then once my team is actually done swapping the lens, even if it takes us less than a minute, by the time the AD gets the whole crew and cast back in their places, it takes minimum another two minutes. In total, you just spend three minutes swapping out the lens. And in a low budget shoot where, for example, you might be doing up to 60 setups per day, that adds up up to 180 minutes or three hours spent on just changing out the lenses. Or as I like to call it, three hours that could be used to get really cool extra shots. Uh, and it's the same if you have too many lights, for example, on set and you decided to make a small change in lighting, which again, adds up to hours of last time. So extra gear or lenses will give you more options, but they are great only when you have the time to actually use them. In low budget productions where time and crew size is usually limited, uh, you're always better off getting just what you need to get by and not more. So all of you who struggle working on those bare bones productions, take heart in knowing that you're actually developing really great skills that are gonna be really important uh, even when you get to the top of this industry and are given big dollars to make those movies. Now the next question I'm gonna answer is whether you can shoot a whole project with just one lens. And the short answer is yes. If you need to get a close up, just just move your camera closer to your subject. Uh, and if you need to get a wide shot, then uh, with any lens, you can do that by, again, moving your camera further back. Of course, for that to work, you need to make sure to find locations that are gonna allow you a lot of freedom to move as far back as you need uh, to capture the, the shots that, that you want. So choosing the right location, but also choosing the right lens is gonna make a big difference. Uh, so to answer the next question of what lens I should get, uh, I say get what you prefer to shoot with the most. If you're not sure which lens that is, then rent the lens that you're interested in the most and then try to shoot a test scene with it uh, just using that one lens. I always do that, like for example the test that you see me shooting here using the new anamorphic lens uh, for Micro Four Thirds lens mount uh, from Vazen. Once I felt confident that the, the focal length of this lens would allow me to get the kind of shots th that I like to do, uh, then uh, I actually did a whole job using just that one lens. And this music video is one such example. My favorite focal length for any type of lens, both anamorphic and spherical, is around 50 millimeter on an APS-C size image sensor or something like a super 35 uh, millimeter camera. 
Since this Vazen lens is 40mm but it's anamorphic with a 1.8 squeeze uh, ratio, it means that in the horizontal field of view it's actually a 72mm lens. Uh, once you factor in the crap aspect ratio of the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera, its focal length on an APS-C size camera is gonna be around 50mm. So like the many other 50mm lenses that I love using, this Vazen lens is also a perfect middle lens that can be used for both close-up, medium and wide shots. Uh, since this music video we were shooting uh, had lots of locations and we only had two days to shoot it, uh, having a camera that was always rigged up and ready to go meant that we could spend more time on getting the right performance and set dressing and not have to wait around for the lens changes. Uh, same thing with lighting. We only used two powerful but small LED lights, uh, sort of like the Aperture 300D lights, uh, and we used those to fill in some of the shots uh, or to light this performance we did at dusk. Uh, otherwise, we just used reflectors. It was a simple and a fast way of filming. Uh, it was also helpful that we didn't have to haul around so much gear since some of the locations we were filming in were not the safest uh, and we did not have any extra crew to really just kind of sit around and watch our camera bags. So uh, we spent more time on having fun, you know, being creating instead of worrying about uh, our gear getting stolen. Uh, speaking of safety, if you guys are going to be traveling to any remote locations like I did, for example, for this shoot, and you plan to use, uh, let's say, Wi-Fi at the, one of those shady hotels, then please don't just connect right away like I did, which ended up with me uh, getting both my email and one of my bank accounts uh, hacked. Thank God I now resolved all of my issues and I also learned the hard way uh, to always encrypt my connection to the internet. And I do that by using the VPN, which stands for Virtual Private Network. I'm sure you guys have heard that a ton of times. I've tried a few different services, but now I'm just sticking to using NordVPN because uh, when it comes to streaming videos, uh, they were the fastest. And using NordVPN, I can switch my browsing location to any country really fast and I can get access to all the content that I want to watch. Uh, plus, like I said, NordVPN is really good at encryption, so I know my information won't get stolen again. If you guys want to try them out, then go to nordvpn.org slash tomantos, or just click the links in the description. Uh, also, don't forget to use the coupon code tomantos, and by the way, all of this works on, uh, doesn't matter whether you're using a phone, tablet, or your laptop. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you thought, if you have any other questions. Uh, and I've, as always, if you haven't already, go to my website at tomantosfilms.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter so you're notified of any future videos or posts that, that I do. Uh, anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.